briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1983, a case known as Clay v. Johns Manville Sales Corp. caught the public's attention as it brought to light the potential dangers of asbestos-containing products. John Ed Clay and Curtis Bailey, along with their wives, filed complaints against Johns Manville Sales Corporation and Raybestos Manhattan Inc. for damages caused by their exposure to these products. The trial took place in the Eastern District of Tennessee and resulted in jury verdicts in favor of the defendants. The plaintiffs, however, were not satisfied with the outcome and appealed the decision, citing errors in the judge's instruction to the jury regarding the effect of a 10-year statute of limitations on the case against Raybestos Manhattan. They argued that the judge did not adhere to the interpretation mandated by the Tennessee Constitution and Supreme Court. One of the key issues in the appeal was whether a deposition from a doctor who had knowledge about asbestos disease from his employment with Johns Manville Corporation could be used as evidence since he was unable to testify in court. The court ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, permitting the deposition under specific conditions. In a notable decision, the court vacated the judgments against the plaintiffs and ordered a retrial against defendant Raybestos. This outcome set a precedent for the use of offensive collateral estoppel in federal courts, giving trial courts the discretion to apply the doctrine under specific conditions. The case brought attention to the dangers of asbestos and the importance of ensuring that the legal system properly considers the rights of those who have been harmed by exposure to hazardous materials. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.